Hi and welcome back. Up to now we learned EPS, OBS, how to create them, then how to link EPS and OBS, how to create a calendar, how to create a project, how to create WBS and activities inside the project, what's critical path method, how to calculate forward and backward path, and in last session we learned four types of relationships between activities. In this session we are going to link activities in Primavera. And let's see how Primavera generates early, late dates and float. Okay, let's open P6. This is our project, one story house. Okay, now let's open this project. For that, just right click here. First select the project, then right click here. Okay, now after right clicking this option, first option, open project. It will open our project. This is activity window, we can see here. It is written here activities here we have two tabs okay activities and projects when you click project it will open project window when you click activities it will open activity window these are the activities now here in Gantt chart I cannot see any activity bars here so in your Primavera if you can see the activity bars it's okay if you are not seeing any bars here just double click here it will make the activity bars appear like this this area is called as Gantt chart area. Now each bars here represents the activities here in this list. Now the length of this bar comes from activity duration. Bar length will increase and decrease based on this duration. This top area in Gantt chart is called as time scale and this top row is week wave splitting and this bottom row is day wave splitting. In your Primavera, maybe the time scale format is different. So, how to modify time scale? For that, just right click here in this area, then select time scale, this option. Okay, it will open the time scale window. Now, first select this two line option, then go to this option, date interval. Now, click here in this drop down. Now here from this list we need to select the format which we need. For our project let's select week per day 1. We can select either day 1 or day 2. Both are almost same. I hope you understand the other options also. For example this one year per month. If we select year per month in the top row year will display and the bottom row month will display. Let's see it. Let's apply this one. See in the top row the year 2000 will appear and the bottom row the months will appear January, February, March like that. In big projects, we mostly use this format year per month format, mostly in projects with one year or more duration. In such cases, this format will save Gantt chart space. We also have many other options here. Just select any option, then apply it. We can see the changes here in Gantt chart. Now we need to select a time scale format for our project. Our project duration is below 30 days only. So for better viewing the activity bars on Gantt chart, let's select week per day one. Okay, so let's select it, then apply it. Okay, our time scale format is now week and day format. Now see the activity bars in Gantt chart are gone. In such cases, what should we do? Just double click here. I am double clicking. See the activity bars are back in Gantt chart. Now let's talk about how this mouse point behaves in Gantt chart. In here it will be in the shape of an arrow mark. When it moves up and touches the time scale, the arrow mark will change to lens shape. Okay. Again when we move up, it will change to a hand symbol. When you see this hand symbol, just click and hold, then move the mouse point to left and right. We can use this hand symbol for moving the entire Gantt chart left and right. Now let's move the mouse point little down. It will change to a lens shape. Now click, hold, move this mouse point to left and right. It will compress and expand the entire Gantt chart area. So we have two mouse tools here. One is hand tool which help us to move the entire Gantt chart area left right. Then the lens tool which help us to compress and expand the entire Gantt chart area. Okay, now let's go to edit menu. Here, let's expand this. Okay, sometimes the menu will be in compressed form like this. Then we need to expand this by clicking this arrow mark. Okay, so again, let's go to edit menu and select user preference. It will open the user preference window, this one. 
Now in this window, the first tab, the left side top first tab, time units, select that. On right side, you will see an area for duration format. Here in this drop down, make sure this selection is day. Also select this option, show duration label. After selecting these options, we can see the preview here as an example. When we unselect the option show duration label, here we can see the alphabet D representing day is gone. It will only show the number. When we select this option, it will show the alphabet D. Now why we are using this duration label? Here in this drop down, we can see there are many options, hour, day, week, month, year. We can select any one of these. Suppose we are selecting hour. Now it's showing 81 hour. Now if this option is turned off, here it will show only the number 81. We don't know whether this 81 is hour, week, day, month, year. So for easily identifying the unit of time, we use this option. Actually we can identify it by looking at the start and end date, but it's little difficult. For easily identifying the duration unit, we always turn on this option. Okay, It will be easy for us for identifying whether the duration is in hour, day, week, etc. Now let's turn back unit of time to day and make sure this option is on. Okay, now close this window. Now here all the durations are in day also with the letter D. Now let's give duration for all these activities. We will use the same duration we used in our critical path session, this one. Okay, all the activities are given durations same as shown in the picture. Presently, there is no relationship between these activities in Primavera. By relationship, I mean these linkings. We can see here all activities are connected. So we need to give this connection, this relationship in Primavera activities also. Next step is to give relationships for these activities. For that, let's go to the bottom half of Primavera. Now here we can see the tabs predecessor and successor. I hope you remember these terms from our critical path session. This is where we give our activity relationship, okay. We need to add one more tab here, okay. Now for adding a tab in this area, we need to right click here in this area. Then select customize activity details, okay. Here, now these are the already added tabs. Now we need to add this relationship tab to here. If in your Primera you already had this tab, then it's okay. Otherwise you need to add it, okay. Let's add it. Okay, now it's there in the list. Now let's move it upwards. Okay, so the relationship tab is now set just after the status tab. Now click OK and close this window. Let's go to the tab area. See our new tab relationship is here. Select it. Inside that we can see two areas, predecessor area and successor area. This is the benefit for relationship tab. We can see predecessor and successor in one window itself. Here we have separate tab for predecessor. Here we can see predecessor only and successor is also separate. For seeing these two together, we added relationship tab. For adding relationship here, first we need to select the activity. Okay. Then we can add the predecessor for the selected one. Also the successor for the selected activity. This is the area where activities are listed. We need to select an activity and the details of that activity can be seen here in the lower half of Primavera. For example, let's select this activity. Now we can see that activities general properties here, status properties here, relationship properties here like that. For every activity in this list, we can see the details in the bottom part. Okay, now let's start activity linking. For that, first select this relationship tab, then select our first activity, site preparation. Let's take a look at our activity relationship chart. Now here after site preparation, we need to start three activities, garden area preparation, piling column works and compound or foundation. Okay. So these three activities need to be start immediately after site preparation. That means site preparation activity have these three successes. Let's give that relationship in Primavera. First select the activity site preparation, then go here, the successor area. Then click this button assign. It will open the assign window. I am moving this window assign successor window. Now let's enlarge this window. For that click and drag on the corner. Now we need to select the successor activities for site preparation from this list. Our first successor for site preparation activity is compound wall foundation. So let's select that one. Now for assigning same, we need to either double click on the compound wall foundation or just select it and click this plus button. Okay. 
here I am doing the double clicking method. See, Compound Wall Foundation is now in the successor list for site preparation. And here the relationship for Compound Wall Foundation is FS, finish to start. That means after finishing site preparation only, Compound Wall Foundation starts. By default, FS will be the relationship type for all assigning activities in Primavera. Let's assign next successor for site preparation, which is filing and column works, this one. So let's double click it. Okay, it's added to our list. Now next, garden area preparation. Now let's select and double click. That also added to our successor list. Let's go to next activity. So garden area preparation. So the successor for garden area preparation is fertilize soil. Okay. Now this window, this assign successor window, there is no need to close this window. Let's keep it there. Now let's select this garden area preparation activity. Okay, it's selected. Now the successor is fertilize soil. So first select this activity, then go to the assign successor window and double click fertilize soil. Okay, it's added to the list. Successor for fertilized soil is planting. So select fertilized soil. Now we need to add the successor for that double click planting. It will add planting to the successor list. Now we completed the linking for these three. First we linked site preparation with these three. Then we linked these three. Let's move to our next activity, piling and column works. So successor is roof concreting. So select piling and column works here. Then double click roof concreting. Okay, done. Roof concreting successor, block work and plastering. So select roof concreting here and double click block work and plastering. Okay. Linking these three completed. Next, compound wall foundation. Successor is compound wall block works. So let's select compound wall foundation from here and double click compound wall block works. Okay, done. Next, compound wall block works. Successor, compound wall plastering. Select this one and double click compound wall plastering. Okay. We linked all activities except these two. Now our next linking comes here. Painting electric plumbing works is related with block work and plastering, also with compound wall plastering. After finishing these two, this will start. Means the successor for these two activities is painting electric plumbing works. First, let's add the successor for block work and plastering. So select that activity. Then the successor is painting electrical plumbing works. So select it. So this one, double click, it's added. Next activity, compound wall plastering. Okay, so let's select this activity from here, compound wall plastering. And the successor is painting, electrical, and plumbing works. Double click it. Okay, add it. We linked these three activities now. Our next relationship is from planting to handover and from painting, electrical, plumbing works to handover. Handover is the successor for these two activities. Okay, so let's select planting from Primavera. Let's select planning. Now the successor is handover. Double click it. It's added. Now our second activity, painting electric plumbing works and successor is handover. So let's select painting electric plumbing works and the successor handover. Double click it. Okay, added. We completed linking all these activities. Now let's close this assign successor window. Now we can see here in Gantt chart, there are relationship lines between these activities. If you cannot see these relationship lines in your Primavera, what you need to do is you need to click this button for relationship lines. It will turn on and off the relationship lines like this. Okay. So use this for turning on and off these relationship lines. So we given all the relationships. Next, we need to move these activities according to the relationships we given. Here we can see the start date for all activities are same, 1st Feb. And the finish is coming from its duration plus start. All the dates here are wrong. For example, Compoundal Foundation. After Compoundal Foundation, block work should start. Block works should start from 4, not from 1. All the dates here are wrong because we didn't run schedule. After running schedule only, we will get correct dates for all activities in Primavera. Okay. We can find this schedule option here. See, this is the icon for schedule and the keyboard shortcut for schedule is F9. Whenever we make any changes in our plan or schedule, we need to run this schedule option. Then only Primavera reflects those changes in our plan. Let's select it. So this is the window for running schedule. Now this date is the project start date which we given to the project when we created it. 
okay so that date defaultly becomes current data date let's run this schedule by clicking this button now we can see here all the activity bars are rearranged based on the links and the durations which we given to the activities here our last activity is missing from this Gantt chart so for seeing that we can either roll it down or we can drag this bottom boundary this one a little for seeing it like this see now all the activities are visible here now all the activity bars on Gantt chart are rearranged also we got dates for all activities the path formed by these red activity bars represents critical path now let's add columns for early and late dates here okay now for adding columns just right click here in this area and select columns column window is open now let's remove start and finish from here we don't need them now let's search for this early and late dates now this this is the date section so expand this date section now from here early start and early finish let's add to the right side i'm double clicking for adding them next late dates here late start double click and late finish okay so here early start early finish late start late finish and total float let's move this total float downwards total float is the same float which we studied during the critical path session okay let's close this now let's adjust the width of these columns for that we can click and drag the boundary in between columns like this or we can double click the boundary in between two columns like this column width will get adjusted based on its contents now let's do the same for all columns okay all the columns are adjusted based on its contents now let's check the dates for each activities the early start early finish late start and late finish while learning critical path we calculated all these dates okay but in primavera there is no need for calculating just put the duration and the relationships primavera will automatically calculate all the dates and plots okay now let's compare these dates and the dates which we got during our critical path session let's take any activity here for example this commodore foundation now the early start for commodore foundation 4 february and early finish 6 feb here for commodore foundation early start 4 and early finish 6 it's correct right late start 10 and late finish 12 here also 10 12 and the float 6 here also 6 project ends on 24 here also project ends on 24 our project starts on 1st Feb and ends on 24th Feb. Okay. Now the zero float activities. These zero float activities are shown here in Gantt chart as red bars. The critical path activities. Now we can give the date related or duration related output to our boss or whoever interested in this project. Okay. Now from this schedule we can say the total duration of our project is 24 days starting on 1st Feb, ending on 24th Feb and we have the critical path this this activities means the zero floated activities these are some of the details which everyone wants to know from a schedule now let's select one activity from here let's say commodore foundation now the successor is commodore blockworks and the relation is fs okay all the relations here are fs same we can see from here now whenever we want to change the relationship type just click here it will give a drop down with all the four types of relations we can select anyone from them the activity selected here is compound wall foundation now the compound wall foundation has a first relation with compound wall block works now let's change that relation to ff now see the relationship changed now when we schedule this bar will move backwards okay let's schedule and see what happens schedule see now both activities got same finishing date let's change the relation to ss see again the relationship changed now let's schedule and see the change schedule okay see same start date for both activities now let's put sf start to finish and schedule here the start date for the first activity and the finish date for second activity is same okay let's change the relationship type back to finish to start fs and schedule okay activities moved to their original position 
I hope you understand activity linking the application of critical path and the relationship types. If you have any doubts, let me know.